serving him in spirit and in truth. It is by God's grace and by his blessings that we're all present this morning. And we should feel it a privilege, an honor, and indeed a blessing to be here for that purpose. We want to say hello to everyone we haven't had the opportunity to speak to as of yet. And we are thankful you chose Brooks, your place to come to, to, together this morning to worship. Amen. I want to say something here that's something that came out on the radio program about worship. There are so many folk who are in, in the dark or uninformed about worship. Now, hear this very clearly. Worship is the showing of homage to the greater. Amen. To give homage or respect to that which is greatest. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, man is a worshiping being. Amen. He's going to worship something or someone. Amen. Amen. Now, when it comes down to worship, as to what God has said what worship is, mm -hmm. he has given us five items or five principles of worship. Amen. Now, we worship God individually every day. Amen. Uh, an act of kindness. Yes. That's a form of worship. That's called fellowship. Amen. Right. Sharing one thing in common with somebody else. Yes. To eat a meal together. That's a form of worship. Amen. Because you're sharing all things in common. Yes. Amen. To do a good deed is a form of of worship. Amen. To sing a spiritual song is a form of worship. Now, we do those things every day. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> Christians do these things every day. Amen. Now, we sometimes we sing some songs that's not spiritual, but we still sing songs. <laughs> Go ahead. Sometimes we sing songs that's not spiritual, but we still sing songs. Amen. Amen. But when it comes down to worship, in a collective sense. Amen. Meaning when the whole church come together unto one place for the purpose of worship, God set aside one day. Amen. Put us through that. Yes. Upon the first day of the week. Yes, we come together in a collective sense to worship God collectively, meaning all together. Yes, sir. Yes. Now we can do our own day individually as to worship God individually every day. But when it comes down to the whole church coming together collectively, we have five principles of worship. Amen. Preaching, praying, singing, giving, and communing. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what God has ordained for us to do every time the church comes together on the first day of the week to worship. Yes. We can't add anything to it or to take anything away from it. Amen. Amen. It's not our job to add things to, to, to the worship. I know that's been violated by many folks these days, but as Joshua said, you choose you this day, we're going to worship. As for me and my house, Amen. we're going to worship the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Now, if there are any more questions about worship, you can ask me during this sermon or after, after, after the sermon. You can ask me about worship and we'll, clear, we'll clarify everything. Amen. As a matter of fact, anyone who's here, you have the privilege and book to ask questions. Amen. 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 Be it a member or a minister, you have the privilege to ask questions. Amen. My mother said, uh, uh, used to say, don't go around with your nose all sliding. You don't know you ought to ask somebody. Yes. Amen. Amen. This morning, good morning. Good to see all of us here this year. God has gave us a new year. Amen. All of us have been blessed with God's grace and mercy to still be here. And we should be ever so thankful about that. That's right. We don't thank God enough, really. Amen. We don't. Amen. We should, but we don't. But the thing about it is, for some reason, we are all still here. Today is to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. This sermon this morning, misnamed, slandered, and misunderstood, is the result 
all of the meetings and talks I've been having with the lawyer. And he's very confused. But he began to see a few things differently. His name is Mr. Ballard, an attorney. He goes to Brentwood, he and his wife. And he's real curious about some things. And I've been talking with him time to time. And this past Friday, when I saw him, the first thing he said to me was, where your Bible at? Amen. And that's about lit up. I got it right here. I'm like a commercial on TV. I don't leave home without it. <laughs> I said, I got it right here. He said, well, I want you to explain to me Psalms 33 and verse 2 and 3. Because we discussed this over at Redwood. I said, well, I tell you what, let's go to the Bible and let's read it. Beloved, in Psalms 33, and verse 2 and verse 3, the psalmist says, Praise the Lord with he says, heart. Praise the Lord with heart. Sing unto him with, Sing the, unto him altar, with the psalteries. And instruments of ten strings. And instruments of ten strings. Sing unto him a, Sing new, unto song, him a new song. Playing skillfully, playing with, the skillfully with the loud note. Now, he said, Well, this passage here says, We can praise the Lord with instruments. Mm -hmm. He said, The string in it, which I said, So if, that, if, if that's by me, that means. Everybody must play an instrument with ten strings on it. Amen. And I can't play a note. That's right. He said, well, is that really saying that? I said, I'll tell you what you do. If one psalm is binding, all of them are binding. Amen. You agree? He said, I agree. Okay, well, if that's binding upon everybody, what about Psalm 66? We're going to start reading verse 13. And while I'm going that way, I want to ask you, where's your goat and where's your book? He said, what do you mean? I said, you're going to see when I get there. In Psalm 66 and verse 13, the Bible says what? I will go into my house. I will go house into the house with burnt offerings. With burnt offerings. I will pray thee my mouth. I will mouth, pray, pay thee my mouth. With my lips. With my lips. Uttered. Have uttered. And my mouth has spoken. And my mouth has spoken. When I was in trouble. When I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee. I will offer unto thee what? Burnt, burnt sacrifices of families. With the incense of rams. With the incense of rams. I will offer bullock. I will offer bullock with goats. Come in here. Now, I said, well, where are your incense at then? Where are your rams? Where are your books? And where are your goats? Because if one song is binding, all of them are binding. He said, well, surely it didn't mean all that. I said, yes, it did. It said it. Mm -hmm. It said, just things the man go, and you'll be with that. But let's get what Jesus said about all of that. Amen. In Luke 24 and verse 44. Let's see what Jesus, our Lord, said about the song. In Luke 24 and verse 44. The Bible says what? And he said unto them, he said unto them These are the words that I speak unto you while I was yet with you. That all things, how many things, people, all things, how many things, all things, that all things must be fulfilled, must be fulfilled which were written in the law of, in the law of Moses, Moses and, in the prophets, and in the prophets and in the Psalms. And in the Psalms. He you. says those things must be what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. <laughs> what does fulfilled mean? Film full. It has served its purpose. Hmm. I'm here with a, 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 a bottle of water here. If you were to fill it to the very brim, mm -hmm. that would mean the context thereof has been full filled. Mm -hmm. It has served its purpose. Once I drink it all out. <laughs> So bottle then is empty. Amen. I have quit my thirst, hopefully. For me to use this bottle again, I must either refill it mm -hmm. or dispose of it and get another one. Amen. Because this one has been, <laughs> it has served its purpose. Amen. You can see that? You can see this. Amen. He says the Old Testament law, the prophets, and the Psalms 
has been fulfilled. They have served their purpose. He said, you know, now I understand. We can't go back. And that's my very point. You can't go back there to prove anything. It's by our learning, but not our law. He said, well, then what was then is our law. I said, I'm glad you asked that question. What then is the law for Christians? Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> and verse 16. But right. Paul says, but I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed right? of the gospel of Christ. It it's the power of God and salvation, salvation to everyone that believes. To, to, to the Jew first, to the Greek. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith that with the just shall live. That's what that's our law. It's the gospel law we have today. Amen. Amen. In the gospel law, we are told to sing. And we just finished doing that. Amen. Amen. So I thought I'd bring the lesson right here. Misnamed, slandered, mis 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 understood. Now, I want to say something about this because it seemed to go on not only from the Paul standpoint, it affected the whole church. Now, for the context or the background of our text, of Acts 24, 1 through 9, we have Brother Paul going on trial. He has been arrested in Jerusalem. He go on trial now, and they'll say he had profaned the temple. They went and got him a, a, a professional speaker, an orator. He wasn't a lawyer, but he was a, they call him these days a motivational speaker. Somebody who, who knows how to get folks all riled up, get them all agitated, get them all excited. And some people have that, that kind of ability, amen. amen. There are some guys who can speak so well and get you all fired up, especially on Sunday. Amen. Amen. They got, they got a school for that. It's called hooping. Let me write that down. It's called hooping. And there are some guys who go to school to learn how to hoop. The whole purpose of that is for emotional content. Get people all excited. So they went and got them an orator, a hooper, named Trigulous. Yes, sir. I don't think a lot of people know what hooping is. I'll get that in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they had a, got a guy named Trigulous, an orator. And he began to accuse Brother Paul of some weird charges. All these false accusations. He called him a pestilent fellow. What does it mean to be a pestilent fellow? It comes from the word pestilence, odious. Meaning he's a slanderous kind of guy. He knows how to move people and how to get folks to do things that they want to do. Amen. It's like, it's like a plague or a portal that spread among folks. An agitator. He's a pestilent fellow. In other, words, in other words, he's bothersome. He's stirring these people all, getting them all worked up and all fired up. And he's causing seditions among people. In other words, dividing the people. Dividing the people. Now, then he says he's the reign leader of the second of uh, Nazarenes. That, that what he called the church. The second of Nazarene. But see, that shouldn't have been a problem because. There was sex already among them. Pharisees, Pharisees, Essenes, Zealots, and Hodians. They were already there. Mm -hmm. But you know something here? You don't find these names nowhere in the Old Testament. Mm. From Genesis to Malachi, you don't read of the Pharisees, Pentecostals, Essenes, Zealots, Romans, <coughs> or Nazarene. You, you don't find that there. You know why? Because God gave them one law. One law. They 
divide themselves into six. Hmm. How could there be division when God gave only one? Good question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How could there be division when God gave only one? In Exodus 20, and verse 1, this is what most folk miss. And I showed this to Mr. Bowden too. I said, you know, it's good to understand context because it's good to know who's talking, who he's talking to, under what time frame it occurred, and what was going on, making sense what he said. If you're not involved in that context, then God is not talking to you. In Exodus 20, and verse 1, the Bible says, And God spake all, all these words, saying, I am the Lord my God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt. So if God, if you were out of Egypt when they were, then God is not talking to you. Deuteronomy 5. And verse 1, the Bible says, And Moses called all Israel. And Moses called all Israel. Israel, 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 Israel,
is these slick talkers and these smooth speakers have gotten out there and they have swayed people and misled them into believing false doctrine. Amen. The same thing going on right here with what Paul here. This guy knew how to, not only are they liars, they know how to lie. Amen. Some are smooth speakers. Yes, sir. They know how to sway people with their voice. Yes, sir. Amen. And it's done all the time, every Sunday sometime. Amen. And I've seen folk get and run and try to pull people want a better minister and hug him and raise him up. That's a bunch of foolishness. Amen. Amen. But they've been taught how to hoop. Yes, sir. He come with Adam. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm coming with him. Yes, sir. Bring it on. What is it they have done? I can show you how to see, 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 see. I, I, I will tell you, Mr. Barrett, that I can do as good as next man. That's just not my style. Amen. I don't mind that hooping as long as a man teaches the truth. Amen. But here it goes. You see, I don't want to prove this. I know how to do it, but it's not my thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But see, the whole purpose of that is emotional content. Amen. Because people are all worked up emotionally. And there are people out there who know just how to do it. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to show you how to hoop. Come on. It's done really among our natural friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're real good at it. Yes. yes. See, when you learn how to hoop, yes. you got to first talk yes. on a monotone. Yes. <laughs> Just like this. And you talk real choppy and real breathy. Just like this. And what you got to do is learn how to use the rhythm of your voice with the voice of your words Go ahead. to make these things match up, to move people emotionally. Yes. Amen. Oh, and you can, sometimes you can talk real high like this, or you can talk real low just like this. Yes. Uh -huh. and you can, amen. Go ahead. And you can use the rhythm yeah, yeah. of your voice, and you can, if you know how to sing with it, and you can bring your voice a little higher, or you can bring your voice a little lower. And see what I'm talking about. Just to get folks all moved up emotionally. And that's what hooping is all about. And it's done all the time. Every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening. Amen. Amen. Mm, praise the Lord. Lord. I want y'all to sing a song and sing a prayer. I'm going outside. Give me the fresh air. Mm, praise the Lord. And there was a guy one time who was real good at hooping. And he did this every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening. And he did this so much that it Church building was just packed full of people every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening. He'd be in there hooping. I want to go to heaven, sound my name. I've been changed. I want y'all to sing a song and say a prayer. I'm going outside, dealing the fresh air. Who mm -hmm. me? He was always signifying every Sunday morning. I've been there. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Have you been there? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And that was done every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening. But he had a, a bottle out in the tree behind the church building. Now he'd go out and get a hit and come back in and end down and then while he's still in that hooping loom. Praise the Lord. I've been changed. Go to heaven. Sign my name. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I want y'all to sing a song and say a prayer. I'm going outside. Give him the fresh air. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And he go outside and he get him and he come back. And that's some guys out there barbecuing. And they were taking some whiskey, but they ran out. But they saw him come going in and out. <laughs> get him a hit going back in. <laughs> so. They went and stole his bottle. <laughs> While he stood inside, took the bottle. Who mm, the Lord? I want y'all to sing a song and say a prayer. I'm going outside. Give him the fresh air. Who mm, the Lord? He went outside and saw his bottle was gone, and he came back in with rocks in his jaws. Don't say no prayer or say no song. I went outside, and my fresh air was gone. <laughs> 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 and all that's done for emotionalism, amen. I don't have any problem with a man doing that as long as a man teaches the truth. But that's just not my style. What Brother Robbins do? I like being Brother Robbins. Amen. amen. I can't be nobody but Brother Robbins. Yes, sir. God has us all in our own circle building. And I'm not here to try to mimic anybody else. I'm Brother Robbins. That's amen. who I am. Yes, sir. And me? I'm not ashamed 
of the gospel of Christ. Amen. It's the power of God and salvation to who? Yeah. Everyone that believes to the Jew first and also the Greek. For there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith and has written the just shall live by faith. But what was going on right here, you had a guy going around bad mouth with really Paul, but he was bad mouth the whole church. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they're still doing it. Yes, sir. One guy called a radio program and said on the air that we were a cult. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And I said, you want to meet and discuss it? No, no, I don't want to meet. So y'all a cult. I said, you know what a cult is? I don't know what it is, but y'all are one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can stand on the outside and make those crazy accusations, but let's meet and talk about it. The Bible tells it, I, Isaiah 118, come now, let us Reason together. Bring it on. Amen. To this very day, the church is misnamed. They call it Camelites. Amen. 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 A cult. Freaks. And all kinds of stuff like that. Slandered and totally misunderstood. Mm -hmm. We speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. We must teach people. All they had those things, not in the Old Testament, between Malachi and Matthew. You have a 400 year silence when the Bible is silent. You must turn then to sacred history to find out what took place. Within that 400 years, then you had the rise of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and stuff. They rose up then. And all of these were wrong because God only gave them one law. They by themselves. But Trevor says that Brother Paul was a great leader. Mm. Well, let's see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to start reading verse 13. If Brother Paul was a great leader, let's see what he says. Is Christ divided? He says, he, he talked to the folk in Corinth who had started doing the very same thing, started holding homage to the one who baptized him, saying, I'm a Paul, I'm a Apollos, I'm a secret. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God. I, I thank God that I baptized none of you. But Christmas. But Christmas and Gaius. Uh-huh. Less any Less any to say I had baptized in my own. own. See? Does that sound like a great leader? No. He says it's Christ divided. Mm. Were he baptized in the name of Paul? Mm. There are best all to know. Does that sound like a great leader? Yeah, sure. Amen. Mm. The guy was lying. Mm. Turtles. Exactly. Sanitize the brother's name. And for the most part, mostly misunderstood. He tried to say that Paul was the leader of the church. But the Paul was telling him, no, it's not me. Let's find out. Let's find out. Because, see, most folks think that the Pope is the head of all churches. Most folks believe the Pope is the voice of God on earth. They sure do. Most people believe that. So when the media, when that stuff come up in religion, the media always turn to the Vatican <laughs> for the answer. No! Open your Bible up! Amen. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22, we're going to find out who's the head of the church. It is not the Pope and it's not Paul. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22, the Bible says, and put all things under his feet and gave and him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the, the fullness of him that filleth all. Oh, who, go, go to verse 20 to find out who he is. Which is wrought in which Christ. Which he wrought where? In Christ. In Christ. See, he raised him from the dead. See, city. that's who he is in that context. He is Christ. Christ is the head. Of the church. Amen. And put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to be the head of all the church, which is his body. See? Mm -hmm. Let's get a little more. In Ephesians, the fifth chapter. 
and verse 23. For the husband is the head of the house. Now, well, everybody should get this because this is too plain to see. Because everyone knows that marriage is universal. Mm -hmm. You will find marriage all over the globe. Amen. And Brother Paul makes it so plain. For the husband, For the husband is the head, head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. No, the Pope. Uh uh. Christ. The Pope. Christ. Paul. Christ. Peter. Christ. The pastor. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> For the husband is the head of the wife. Even, even as Christ, Christ is, the head of the church. is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. Of the body. Therefore, Therefore, as the church is separate under Christ, Christ so let the wife be under their own husband and everything. Husband, love, love your wife, wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not in a spot, a wrinkle, or any such thing, but that you be holy and without blemish. So are men who love their wife as their own wife. He that loves his wife loves himself. But no man can ever hate his own flesh, but nourish it and turn it, even as the love the church. For we, we are the members of his body, of his flesh and of his bone. What is he talking about? He gave them an analogy because everybody by this time should know about Adam and Eve. Then so that's what he does. He go all the way back. He go all the way back to bring them forward. This here is called foreshadowing. He goes back this way to teach something over here. When God in creation had finished everything, he said everything was good except one thing. In Genesis 2.18, God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I'll make a help me for him. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know the story. Made that go to sleep. I real. And he made a woman. And brought her to Adam. When Adam saw Eve, he says, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she's taken out of man. But the Paul says, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Ephesians. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Read. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery when I speak concerning Christ. See, he the head of it. So Travis was lying. Hmm. He was always bad mouth in the lost church. But they're too, too afraid to tell him to challenge him. No debate, said, I'm always there. Well, I'm always there. What do you next to say? I can find somebody to just read the one. Anybody can stand off and give all kinds of false indictments. Throw rocks at you and hide their head. Hide behind radio way. Anybody can do that. That's the way I like any thought. A coward. I'm saying, bring it on. Be like Muhammad Ali. Frazier, Foreman, come on. I fought them all. I fought them all. Come on. Bring them all. Bring them all. <laughs> Truth has nothing to fear. Amen. It'll stand by itself. We need to talk on the air. Come to push We'll pay for your gas mileage. Come on down. Yes, sir. Come on down. We'll find a way to do it. Come on down. I'm not being braggadocious. I'm just stating the facts. Truth has nothing to fear. But there are folk out there who will bad about the Lord's church all the time. We were yeah. this, this, this past Wednesday. If you were to go out there and put a sign down outside and put no sign out there at all, we get a lot more business. Amen. Go out there and put, put the sign up there that says church. We get a lot more business. Amen. Go out there and put the sign the church. A lot more business. Go out there and put God's heritage. A lot, lot more business. Go out there and put on there the household of faith. More business. Go out there and put the body. More ministers. Go out there and put the church of the Lord. More ministers. At the same time, you put out there, Church of Christ, 
Oh, we're not going over there. We're going over there. We're going over there. Amen. All of those names I gave you are all scriptural. Amen. All of them are. Amen. That's called you. Why folks act like they can do what? It's called prejudice. Amen. To prejudge. But that's the main one saying, you can't judge me. The very phrase, church of Christ scares some people. That's right. The very phrase scares them. Yeah, get mad about it. But then they'll turn around and say, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter why you so upset about it. I don't care how mad folk might get. The Bible is still right. And being divided in the area of religion, it is wrong. When you teach man-made doctrine, it is wrong. Amen. We're going to keep what Jesus our Lord said. In Matthew 15, and verse 8, and verse 9, Jesus our Lord said what? Well, this says, people, go ahead, this, this people, people draw us not unto me with their mouth, and, and they honor me, me with their lips. But their heart, heart is far from, from me. me. But in vain. See? But in vain they do worship me. Teach it for doctrine, the commandment. See what I mean? He said they worship me in vain. What does vain mean? It means useless, worthless, or no value. In other words, you are wasting your time. I know it sounds harsh, but that's the fact. That's how it is. It's like a man is hiring out workers in his fields. And he goes out and says, I'm going to pay my brother Rob, I'm going to pay you $100 a day to work in my fields. You start dawn to dusk. And for every day you work in my fields, I give you $100 a day. And let's say brother Brown figures, well, one field is as good as another. So I'm going to find me a field and work all day long and come at the end of the day and take my $100. Do I don't put around anything? And it's not my fault. I told them to work in my field. <laughs> I just ain't work in any field. Amen. Amen. It don't matter how much blood, sweat, and tears you spent <laughs> in that field. You're doing the wrong field. Amen. Amen. Well, my fault. I say work in mine. If you confused, say what's it? Which one is yours? Amen. Come on, sis. Okay, so if Christ says, come into my beginning work, yeah. upon this point I will build my church, yeah. and you went for 30, 40, 50 years over there in another man's church, does Christ owe you anything? No. no. Wrong field. Now I don't care how much you sing about Jesus, how much you love him, you're in the wrong field. Amen. That's the thing that sounds so hard, doesn't it? Because people always say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And that's true. But God is also severe. When God says something, he means it. When he said, he said my church, he meant his church. Nowhere in the Bible it says, go to the church of your choice. There's nowhere in the Bible. Show me where it's at. It's not there. As, as, as a matter of fact, how many choices do you have when there's only one other thing? We are so misunderstood. How can you when you how can one miss it when there's just one? How can you? See what I mean? But that's what the problem is. If you are going to make your business to help people. You help them in the area where it's what where it's most needed. Most people don't have any problem when it comes down to the mother of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Or the father of Christ. Everybody knows what Joseph. Everybody knows that. Amen. I've been, I've, so it's no point going over a lot of time being on Joseph not being the father of Christ. Everyone knows that. Amen. How about the love of Christ? No matter no problem with that. For God's love the world, he gave only God, so he gave his life, okay? Okay, everybody got that. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody had a problem with the passion of Christ. Amen. Amen. The passion. The movie came out, everybody read it. It means the suffering. Everybody got that. But when it comes down to the church of Christ, that's where the problem is. Amen. So I got to teach you that the church is the wife of Christ. Amen. How many wives can a man have legally? And <laughs> clear that up. Yeah. How many wives can a man have legally? Amen. One. Amen. And Brother Paul had just told us it's a big mystery, but I think it's in Christ and the church. The church is the wife of Christ. That's why wives, see, a wife and a husband become one in marriage. That's why they were the same name. Amen. 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 Now, I don't care what, what Hollywood says. <laughs> Why and husbands were the same name. Amen. Amen. Now, we have been bad mouthed, <coughs> slandered, misnamed, and misunderstood. Why? Because when people have some kind of personal delegation, mm -hmm. they're going to find fault with anything you want to say. Amen. They'll find fault with They'll find some kind of way to bad mouth it. Don't get me wrong. That's just how they say it. It is what it is. That's, right. That's the facts. But you want salvation? You must do it the way God said it. Yes. See, at one time, at one time, the Apostle Paul, Brother Paul, he once was a Pharisee. Yes, sir. Get for me, uh, beloved, get for me first Acts 26. Draw me verse 1 first. Then Agrippa uh -huh. said unto Paul, uh -huh. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Then Paul stretched then forth the hand and answered for and himself. Said, I think myself happy. I'm happy. King of Ripper, King Ripper, because I shall answer for I myself shall, this day. I, I, I like that. He said, I can answer for myself, myself this day. This day. Before thee, touching all to the all things those things of I am accused. I'm accused of. Uh -huh. Especially because I Especially know because thee I know to be expert in all experts and questions which were among the Jews. Among the Jews. He said, Wherefore, I know you know all about our religion. So go ahead on. Therefore, I beseech you to hear me. To hear me. Patiently. Thank you, uh -huh. My manner of life, my my life, of life which was at the first at the of first my own nation of all nations, Jerusalem, known all the Jews. He said all the Jews knew about my lifestyle. Uh -huh. Which knew me from the beginning. From the beginning? If they would tell that after the most straightest side after the most straightest religion, religion, I, I live, live Pharisee. Paul said, I live a Pharisee. I was one of, I was with them. I was one of them. Mm -hmm. Read. And now I stand and, and now I stand and judge of the promise made of God of God to my father, to my, my ancestor. Uh, for time's sake, drop down to verse nine. Here's his train of thought. I barely thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. What do people say when they realize <laughs> they're in error or they're wrong? The first thing they say is, I thought. <laughs> As the person he say, I thought. But the Paul said, we were not again. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. See, he said, I was raised a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. And I verily thought that I could do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. Why? Because they thought that Jesus was another God. Mm -hmm. That's why he stood there as a stone brother Stephen. Because that was going by the letter of the law. That's their train of thought. To this very day, they still think contrary to the name of Jesus. But the Paul said, I was embarrassing, I was with them. And now they gave him money and letters. To go ahead and find everybody who was in the church and give them and call me jail or kill them. But he realized he was wrong. Galatians 1. And verse 13, Brother Paul says, Verse 13, 
For ye have heard you have of heard of my way of life in time in time past, past in the here and now in the jubilation. How that the young men of the Lord I prospered the church and wasted it and profited in and I profited in the jubilation above many of my equals in my own in my own nation. Being more being more sick and zealous of my father, of my father. But when it pleased God, he is now when it pleased God who separated who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace by His grace to reveal to reveal. He was son to me that I might preach I might among preach, the heathens. I might preach among the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with flesh. I didn't ask my mama. I didn't ask my daddy. I didn't ask my kid folks. He said, I didn't refer to the flesh and blood. I didn't ask nobody to read. Neither went I up to Jerusalem. I didn't go to Jerusalem to men who were possible for me. But I went into Arabia, I went to Arabia and returned again unto the And I returned to see. He said, I didn't even ask nobody. I went right back up to him, and that's when Christ trained him for yeah. three years. That's right. That's right. But most folk don't know any better. Amen. Mm -hmm. So before you go off making your crazy accusations and stuff, find the facts out first. Mm -hmm. Any parents in the Bible should be studied in a holistic manner, holistically. Amen. Nobody ever saved by a partial gospel. No. Amen. Either tell it all or don't tell it. If you're going to tell it, tell the whole truth. How do you say it in court? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the head. I like that. And folks still be lying in court. They still be lying. And you know one of the dumbest things I've seen? When folks go to court and go to argue with the judge. Are you out of your mind? Here's, here's a person deciding your fate. You go if you argue somebody, argue with the prosecutor or somebody, go with the judge. Hey, Amen. That's the dumbest thing in the world. But you know what, though? I can just about predict on the day of judgment, there will be folks in that day who try to argue with the judge. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe me. Matthew 7. And verse 21. The Bible reads, Not everyone Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that he do the will of my Father, Father which is in heaven. Here it is. Many will say to me in that He said, Many will say to me, Well, I'm going to throw it out on this. He said, <laughs> Many will say to me in that day, Lord, 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 have we not prophesied? Have we not name? prophesied in your name? And in thy name, and I in your name, devils? we cast our devils. And in thy name, and in your name, work? we did many wonderful works. And then will I listen to them? I never knew you. See, they will never they give us that full judgment to all with Jesus. Lord, did I did this? I didn't know. I never, you know why? You didn't obey the gospel. You didn't do the way I said it. Amen. Yes, sir. That's terrible standing before the judge of Auburn Hill. Amen. Amen. You got to do it the way God said it. Amen. If Christ only built one church, he meant that. One gospel. One size fits all. The God can save everybody if what we just obey. Amen. Amen. Yes. We may call this morning talking about you got to have a Holy Ghost to understand. Mm -hmm. Trying to say we should need to have it. No, man, you misunderstand the whole thing. God gives you the Holy Ghost when you obey the gospel. Amen. If you don't obey the gospel, no Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 That's where it's at. Amen. Now, while I'm going that way, mm -hmm. hear this very clearly. The Holy Ghost was never given to save anybody. No. The gospel is what saves. Upon obeying the gospel, you are given the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's the Holy Ghost itself. Amen. Amen. But the Holy Ghost has gifts too. Yes, sir. But as you, you're from the country of his yes. If I were to give you a bull. Yes, sir. For slaughtering. Yes, sir. I give you this bull as a gift. Yes, sir. Once you get that bull in your possession, 
Yes, sir. You can partake of the bull's gifts. Yes, can't sir. You? That's right. You have many. And the bull got many gifts. Steak. Oxtails. Yes, sir. Real eyes. Yes, sir. Prime real. Yes, sir. Prime. Beef shakes. Yes, sir. Prime. Beef tripe. <laughs> Amen. Beef sausage. If I have some hands out there, I can use it for free. There you, there you go. See, see, see what I mean? So the same thing applies. God, when you obey the gospel, God will give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. He will give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost had gifts now. That's right. Peace and understanding. Amen. The word of God dwelling in your heart. The, the written word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A peace that passes all understanding. See what I mean? Not in a miraculous sense. That nation has ceased now. Folk need to understand these things. What you need to do, I told you on air, the first thing you ought to do is obey the gospel. Yeah. Amen. In Acts 2 and verse 38. When everybody asks, men and brethren, what shall we do? The Bible says, then he said to them, repent, repent and, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the midst of sin, and you shall receive the gift. That's when you get it, when you obey God. Mm -hmm. Our job is trying to get folks to obey the gospel. Yes, sir. Then you have access to all that God wants you spiritually. See, we are so misunderstood. Because folk always bad mouth Yes, sir. Say all kind of scandalous things about you. No, don't worry about that. I'll tell them, come on, let's meet me together. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, I've been raised Baptist, so I'm married to a Church of Christ family, so I'm trying to, I'm a little confused. So, um, I was raised, like, you know, get baptized, you get you thrown for your sin, and you go to heaven. Is that true? Say it again. I was raised, like, you know, get baptized, and like, once we're ready, and then Jesus died for our sins, and that's, and that's what we believe. Is that true? <laughs> and, and, and then you go to heaven. Not like that. I know, so. 